Hello and welcome to Ace the English Hub. We discussed the old and new versions of the cognitive domain in the previous videos. In this video, we shall discuss the affective domain. The affective domain addresses the feelings, emotions, behavior, and attitude of the learners. Previously, the educationists did not encourage emotionalism in education. They believed that learning affected only the intellectual level of a learner and had nothing to do with the learner's emotions, interests, or impulses. But today, they agree that the learner's feelings and emotions are equally important in education. The affective domain was one of the three systems published in 1956 for identifying, understanding, and addressing how people learn. A detailed study of the affective domain was published in 1965 in Taxonomy of Educational Objectives, Book 2, Affective Domain, by Krathwal, Bloom, and others. Krathwal is attributed as the primary author of this book. As Seals and Glasgow point out, the taxonomy is ordered according to the principle of internalization. Now, what is internalization? It is a process where a person moves from a general awareness of a topic to where the change is internalized and guides the character or behavior of the person. The affective domain is generally covered in behavior. That is, they are not openly acknowledged or displayed. The educational objectives vary from something as simple as providing attention to a topic to qualities of character and conscience. According to Krathwall, like cognitive objectives, affective objectives can also be divided into a hierarchy. As this area is concerned with feelings or emotions, and also social or emotional learning and skills, the taxonomy is arranged from simpler feelings to those that are more complex. The affective domain is divided into five major classes of objectives. These are the behavioral abilities that lead to the formation of attitude. These are as follows. First one is receiving. This is the lowest level of the learning outcomes in the affective domain. It means the willingness or ability to receive information and to be attentive. Receiving has three sublevels. These are first one, awareness, then willingness, and third one is controlled or selected attention. Now coming to the first one that is awareness. Awareness involves the conscious recognition of the existence of some problem or a situation. For example, when a teacher comes into a noisy class, there will be a sudden change in the class atmosphere. This is because the students have become aware of the presence of the teacher. They are aware. The second one, willingness. This is the next stage which involves the ability to acknowledge the problem or situation instead of ignoring or avoiding it. When the teacher comes in, the students in the class keep quiet because they noticed and acknowledged the presence of the teacher. If they had ignored her presence, they would have continued to make noise in the class. The third one, controlled or selected attention. This involves the learner selecting or choosing to pay attention to the situation. When a teacher teaches in the class, the learner is aware of what the teacher is saying. The student will deliberately shut off any other distractions around him. The subdomain receiving in a classroom situation involves holding and directing the attention of the learners to whatever the teacher has to say in the class. Now here are some examples of receiving. Listening to others with respect. Listening for and remembering the names of newly introduced people. Now here are some verbs that relate to this function. The second one is responding. Here, the learner responds to the events by participating. The learner attends and reacts to a particular phenomenon. The learner shows interest and actively participates in the learning activity. Learning outcomes in this subdomain may emphasize compliance in responding, willingness to respond, 
and satisfaction and response. First one, compliance and responding, which involves simple obedience or compliance. Second one, willingness to respond. This involves voluntary responses to a given situation. The third one, satisfaction and response, corresponds to the satisfaction a learner attains when he responds to a learning activity. Here are some examples of responding. The student participates in class discussions. The student gives a presentation. The student is able to question new ideals, concepts, models, etc. in order to fully understand them. He knows the safety rules and practices them. Now here are some verbs that relate to this function. The third one is valuing and here the individual set guidelines for controlling their own behavior. Valuing is related to the worth or value a learner attaches to a particular object, phenomenon, behavior or situation. This ranges in degree from a desire to improve group skills to a commitment to assume responsibility for the effective functioning of the group. There are three sub-levels of valuing. First one is acceptance of a value. Second one is preference for a value. Third one is commitment to a value. The first one acceptance. This is a situation where the learner believes tentatively in a doctrine, condition or situation. Second one preference for a value. In this case, the learner believes in the necessity of a particular condition or doctrine. He ignores other alternatives and deliberately looks for other people's views on controversial issues so as to form his own opinion. The third one, commitment. In this stage, the learner is convinced and fully committed to the doctrine, principle or cause. In consequence, the learner internalizes a set of specific values and these values can be seen in his behavior, attitude and appreciation. Here are some examples of valuing. The learner demonstrates belief in the democratic process. The learner is sensitive towards individual and cultural differences or he values diversity. The learner is able to solve problems. The learner proposes a plan for social improvement and follows through with a commitment. The learner informs the management on matters that one feels strongly about. Now here are some verbs that are related to this function. Next one is organization. This refers to the learner's internalization of values and beliefs. Here, the learner starts to bring together different values as an organized system. He determines the interrelationships by comparing, relating and synthesizing the values. There are two sublevels of organization. These are conceptualization of a value and organization of value system. The first one, that is conceptualization, involves the understanding of the relationship of abstract elements of a value or acceptance of a new value. The second one, that is organization, involves the development of a complex value system. This level leads the individual to develop a philosophy of life which helps him to avoid dependence upon others especially to avoid a situation where one becomes a public nuisance. The individual recognizes the need for balance between freedom and responsible behavior. The examples of organization includes the learner accepts responsibility for one's behavior. He explains the role of systematic planning in solving problems. The learner accepts professional ethical standards. The learner creates a life plan in harmony with abilities, interests and beliefs. The learner prioritizes time effectively to meet the needs of the organization, family and self. The examples of verbs that relate to this function are the following. Now the last level is characterization by value set. 
This is the highest level in attitude formation. Here, the person acts consistently in accordance with his values, beliefs or ideals according to his philosophy of life. A lifestyle that reflects these beliefs and philosophy is developed. The behavior of such individuals or groups is controlled by the value system. Here, it is possible to predict with accuracy how an individual would behave or respond. There are two levels here. First one is generalized set and the second one is characterization. The first involves a situation where the orientation of the individual enables him to act consistently and effectively in a complex environment. The individual revises his judgments and changes his behavior as a result of available new and valid evidence. The second one characterization, in this case, the learner is consistently acting in harmony with the value system. The value system regulates the learner's personal and civil life according to a code of behavior based on ethical principles. Here are some examples of internalizing values. The learner shows self-reliance when working independently. The learner cooperates in group activities where he displays teamwork. The learner uses an objective approach to problem solving. The learner displays a professional commitment to ethical practice on a daily basis. The learner revises his judgments and changes his behavior in light of new evidence. The learner values people for what they are and not how they look. Now here are some examples of verbs that relate to this function. Take a look at them. So these are the characteristics of the effective domain. There are educationists who believe that the primary goals of learning are effective. They are of the opinion that learners should not learn what is selected for them by others. This defies learners' own feelings and emotions. Previously, our school system was discipline-centered. Although the primary goal of a good teacher is to help students learn, it is an important role of a good teacher to make students feel good about their efforts to learn and their success in learning. This will help to create a balance and interdependence between the cognitive and the effective processes of learning. That's all for today. See you again next week. Like, share and subscribe if you find our content useful.